My name is Senna Eilenbos. I'm a co-founder of Boerenerf Eilenbos in Huizingen. We are a farm and a blendery, a goose blendery. You will find us making cider, some honey wines, some meads. Especially, actually, the first meads, uh, Ambrosia announced today. And um, we are an agricultural farm. We have still some cattle, some highlander cows. And now we're trying to find a new future for the farm because uh, farming is diffi very difficult in Flanders. And trying to combine farming with brewing and blending and finding a new future in Lambic. We first met you at Drie Fontaine, where I guess you were uh, learning a lot. And what inspired you to start this? I mean, it was your father's farm, or you've been a farm in three, four generations? Six. Six, Six? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so it, it's, um, it's a beautiful thing. We, right now we're in a barn. Um, we put these beautiful um, Botticella barrels from the northern part of Italy. They used to store um, Amarone wine. And we installed them these in 2021. And it was also the jubilee of this barn because this one was built in 1871. So this was a, it's quite an old building, so it's 150 years old. And five years after building this barn, also the brewery next door was founded. So if you come to the farm, of course, you will walk in, you will see this old chimney, which you can also see on the labels of the cuvee bo bottles, the Schabex and the cuvee Heritage. And you'll see, um, yeah, some old buildings. So my family has been making Lambic back in the day, starting from 1860, that I still have some paperwork from. Then I'm talking seven generations back. And my family stopped brewing in 1964. So I will not, I'm from 95, so the brewery has been closed for quite some time, but of course it's beautifully conserved and you can still walk in, you can see the old barrel room, you can still see the old horse tables, you can still see the old brew house, and it's just next door. And that's Brewery Eilenbos Huizingen. Not to be confused with the beautiful building in Schepdal, which is a half hour drive from here, which is also called Brouwerij Eilenbos, but called Spanuit, which is a different name. And my family in Schepdal, which is very, very distant related, and with seven generations ago, um, they stopped brewing in the 90s, and my family stopped brewing in the 60s. So also a big time gap. And so that's a nice historical part of what, what we are doing, and also working in Trifontaine. In 2016, I was at that moment uh, 18 or 19, 19 or 20 years old. And uh, actually, getting into a lambic and I was like what, what the hell is going on also trying to repurpose my steps retrace my steps going back to my grandpa who was 36 years old when the brewery stopped and he was farming and his nephew was brewing Henri Elambos and he was also the last brewer and going back from my great grandfather it was a brewery farm and then back in the day when people had 13 children the brewery was also uh, uh, cut loose from the farm and everybody did his own thing 13 children. That's, uh, can't see that too much anymore. And that's how everything evolves, getting back into Lambic, trying to figure out my family history, also um, making some cuvee heritage bottles to go back to the family, but not using my family name to try to sell my beers, selling out my family name, because of course there's a 50 years difference, 60 years difference between what I'm doing right now and my, what my family used to do. And um, so trying to figure out my own stuff. I'm, my background is nature and environment. That's actually what I used to study. I'm crazy about insects and about um, biodiversity. That's actually my gig. And then getting into Lambic, working in Tree Fontaine for four years, actually um, falling in love and actually wanting to expand my own thoughts and my own stuff, develop, developing my own character, and then finally getting good loose from Tree Fontaine and finally doing my own stuff. And your own stuff, what do you characterize as your love, the kind of style that you're producing? So actually, I think going back, because this is the third release we do, so every season, uh, we have a seasonal release, and we try to sell our bottles um, in summertime, because of course in wintertime when Lambic is brewed, we need to store barrels and we need uh, the cash, because Lambic is the worst beer cash flow wise, it's super difficult. Without my dad and having the farm here, no way this would be able to do. Um, so, also translating Lambic style into cider. So this barrel over there is actually our Normandic apple variety cider, made, uh, which I make together with Luc Tac, which is my mentor in cider making. And then how can we make 
a blending, how can we blend cider? So I aged tannin, very strong tannins, a uh, very big mouthfeel, a little bit woody because it ages for 18 months. And we make a back blend with young cider from local varieties like Berglander, Double Gulf Fleur, um, which bring aroma and acidity. And making an outer cider next to our outer juice, which also can be aging a little bit more. To, and also just yeah, some, good, some cider with some character. So translating lambic and trying to yeah, also make some meat lambic wise. And, uh, so farm stuff. And the farm uh, is organic, I understand? Since 2000. I was five years old when the farm turned organic. And then if you go behind the barn, there used to be cows here. And um, so yeah, this used to be a cow stable. My grandmother, they used to store um, beets and stuff in the winter time. So that's or originally the this barn. So lots and of my, cats around. Yeah, <laughs> and my and on my my mom she used to make cottage cheese, patekes, like we say, um, yogurt, yogurts, um, pudding. So back in the day, Armand used to say, I grew up with two fingers of lambic and three fingers of water when I was five years old. I always drank full glasses and jars of milk. So I'm 50% uh, milk still. <laughs> and um, so yeah, growing up with ice cream and everything my mom used to make with the, with the 40 cows that my, my dad used to milk. Right now the kettle we have is only for, uh, for, for the meats, for eating, which is also nice. But so the styles you do, does it harken back? I mean, do you, where do you get your wort? Is it, uh, so we have five breweries um, that we have right now in our barrels. So we have Lindemans, Drie Fontaine, the Troch, then also we a close rela re relationship with Angerik. It's a small, uh, small brewery in Dilbe. They can brew like 900 liters uh, a few times a week. So it's a very small brewery in comparison to the other brewers. Um, I also have a little bit of the Nerberg and that makes five. And then we have barrels from 220 liters, some Bordeaux barrels, a little bit, a little bit of Bourguignon barrels. And then the boost barrels I use are special barrels I import from the northern part of Italy, which are like these Amarone barrels. And also the Pinot Negra barrels, which are the 300 liter barrels you can see over there. And they are very fixed staves, which is very important for Lambic, especially because this barn is not insulated. It gets quite cold in the winter, it gets quite hot in the summertime, so we need fixed staves, so everything is very condensed. And uh, yeah, you have to work with the, with the farm and also adapt the beer and how we make beer to the farm. So the character of your gases, uh, lambics, are from, do you harken back to what your family did, or is this completely new and original? I hope to be an original. I say we, ch we chose not to use the, the name Adam was for obvious reasons, because the family name is not owned by the family anymore. It's a patented, um, how do you say it, branch, na branch name. It's a branch name, it's not a family name professionally anymore. So I had to distance th that from myself, which was very hard personal-wise, because of course it's my family name, not someone else's. Uh, and now I'm trying to figure out my own stuff. And throughout the years, now I'm backtracing my steps, making Greek, Greek lambic. I said, ah, I, just, I just want to have something if people come to the farm and they're thirsty. I, don't, I will not give them a complex Greek, which is high in acidity, high in aroma. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult to drink. So can I make maybe Greek rosé? So that was the first season I was like, damn, I want to make something very, very tasty. And after three years, we finally found a name. Instead of Krik Rosé or Krik Sider, we call it Zomerkrik. And that's what people are drinking right now. It's just like a, a, a back down Krik, super aromatic, but less in body. And so we have the high body cuvées, and then we have the lesser body, Zomerkrik, and trying to find some special stuff in that. Where do you go from here? I mean, I can see a farm and I go, wow, you could do almost something like Hopf and Dumal does, you know, kind of circular where yeah. you're in control of everything. Is that a dream? Yeah, it's also because people come here, ah, oh, Senna, why don't you brew yet? Why don't you? I'm 27 years old. I started when I was 23. So I was 23, but like, yeah, that's, I was, I was young. I, I put all my money into barrels. It was, it was horrible. I was stressed out completely because also 2020 was a very hot summer. Um, and then, oh, what was the question again? The question was, you know, is your dream where do you go? Ah, yeah, ambitions, ambition-wise. Ambition, yeah, and to have a since you're in a farm like often yeah. normal where they have different things, they're controlled yeah. every phase from the. We we foresee that, or and that's that that's beautiful from uh, the re relationship uh, of Trifontana that we actually grow grains for Trifontana. Also, my brother who has a different farm called Nerov, 
I get my rhubarb from my from my brother, um, and he also grows grains for the grain network. So that's already in circulation. But of course, as a blendery, I have to I have to be choosy as well. So okay, not every brewery is very open to start using other grains and stuff. They have their recipe, and it's their character of that recipe that you that you also want in your barrels. So. Um, yeah, I'm 27. I want to make beer for the rest of my life, so I don't have to do. Every, I don't have to do everything the first three years, but um, and then we have also because it's a farm. It's we call this this location expendable living grounds. So we actually cannot do industry here, like you saw when you come through the through the um, when you enter through the allez, the bridge. The bridge. This is a green spot with all the houses, and the other spot is industry terrain, ever all the cement buildings. And there you can brew as much as you want, but I, it's very difficult for me to start a brewery here because I'm not allowed to. Actually, this barn, the government wants this not to be a farm, but actually to be living spaces. Just like the, the old brewery next door is also repurposed to living space. So that's not in my hands. Um, in the meantime, we, we grew some hops just to figure out how does the harvest work, what machinery do we need to get six meters high without tumbling down. How can you do it? Um, so we have two varieties, Grüne Bell and Detnanger, also very light in alpha acid, so we also, which is re recommendable for Lambic. At the moment, we use these hops to make the meat um, in, uh, in, in September, October, but and step, stepwise, stepwise. All the fruits you can see on our website come from local distributors or straight from the farm. Because short chain, I can tell you as a farmer myself, short chain is a beautiful word, but straight from the farmer is more recommendable. Short chain can be everything, it's a very loose, but if you say we buy our fruits straight from the farmer, no people in between, that's short chain. So we also have some, uh, yeah. I'm 27, I'm still figuring out a lot of stuff. But it's also backtracing my steps. I'm very happy that with the, with the stuff you're making right now, making blending wine with lambic, um, working together with Pascal, trying to get some beautiful riesling grapes, making a blend instead of macerating it, and doing some nice stuff with that. Excellent. And for next year, what can fans expect? We met some of them outside. People are stuck. You know, on our way here, we were saying, yeah, yeah. "What do we expect? Do we expect a lot of people here? Is it well known? Well, it's." So, oh, well. three years old, and then we're seeing some we fans <laughs> coming over. We finally have a newsletter, so um, that's awesome because I've been promising people I'm going to write a newsletter, but in a practical wise, I never did it. So now finally we have a newsletter, which is also our membership, so you don't have to pay for anything. But um, I always say, if you come, als je naar de boerderij komt, wordt het beste gespanjeerd. If you come to the farm, you will be uh, you will be um, treated best. best. So always, people, we do open, open beer days, open barn days, you can come to the farm, you can buy everything we have that we are able to sell, and then afterwards everything will be sold to importers in, in other countries. And Coming to the farm for us is, is most important. Where is your big market then? Is it in Belgium or is it the US or is the export market found? So for this season, we've, we've, we're going to send the first bottles to the States, um, the Netherlands, we have some bars in Paris. Also, actually, most of them are bars. Straight people just coming to the Lambic land and just traveling around, gathering boxes. And for this season, we've, we're gonna send some um, some beer to the States. Also, a little bit to China, to Japan, South Korea, to Cool Ship, um, and foremost Europe. Foremost Europe. So, but of, yeah. The ambition is, of course, people have coming to the farm. And will you be able to expand to meet that kind of demand now you've ventured outside of Belgium? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, like or will it be a rare thing? It's a general rule in Lambic. Time and place is the most, impor is the most important. Of course, passion is it's a, it's a, it's a different side, but time and place. And uh, actually, yeah, the barrels are already four high here, so it's becoming very difficult. Um, but I think, we, I think we manage. We have around 160 barrels right now. Varying sizes, and I'm very, um, I'm very glad about about the volumes we make right now. So what's the volume? We, right now we have um, sixty thousand liters, so six hundred hectares in stock. No, oh, in stock, no, in stock. How much can you? Then so it, yeah, yeah, most of the time it's like half of that. So uh, this season is around thirty thousand liters. Okay. So this is already quite a big volume. So also that's why also we um, split the blend the batch in two. So we have a release right now. 
and then I release in September because we just cannot manage on a 100 square meters we have in the, in the, uh, in the place over there. We, we just cannot package it. So these are your fields then? No. At the other side. Oh, so we have a different farm uh -huh. next door. So this is two farms, uh -huh. one old water mill and a brewery. So this used to be a gehucht, we call it, Solomberg. Uh -huh. And like my grandpa used to say, Minchen had the dust and hunger, and Minchen came to here. <laughs> Minchen, uh, people were hungry and thirsty in the 40s and 50s. So people came here for, for food and drinks. So it's uh, a small area with a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. So right. that's an old water mill, okay. two farms, and an old brew house. And the old brew house is? This big building. Ah, okay. This is a complete building. Okay. So this is an old chimney, and you see on my labels. From ah, the sky, right. The, there used to be like a big ass capot uh -huh. on top of the chimney, and that's also the the the, the logo on the cuvee bottles. Okay. It's also, but I hope when I have when I have too much money, I'm gonna ask the owner <laughs> to put maybe a new chimney head on the top, just just for my. Uh, yeah, for advertising. Wow. And then you can see on the facade, on this side, on the street side, you can see 1876, 1926 and 2008 when the building when the brewery was repurposed to become living space so we still have authentic the outside is still authentic uh -huh. um, and the cellars are still authentic so it's all wealthed beautifully cellars they're huge cellars and uh, the inside now we have a lot of people living there oh. uh, every generation changes something and also the farm it's like lasagna <laughs> it used to be like cobbled stones, then we put some concrete on top, and then you put some, uh, some new concrete on top of that. that. Just like, this used to be sandstone of the original building from, 1800, from the 1700s. And then it was broken down and was rebuilt, but you see still the foundation, it's still a different stone. Ah, right. And every generation start, yeah, changes something. My grandma, she's really made, she really started milking a lot of cows. So up until 1950s, 1970s we only had like 10 cows my grandmother she really said okay we have to be milking cows year round because only one harvest a year if you want to have kids in the 60s 70s it's not possible anymore so then my grandma she changed the stable which is now the ice cream place uh, to 20 cows and then my mom came around and she said i'm gonna use the milk to make my own cheese and start a shop and then we changed to 36 cows so we elongated the original barn and then we changed the, the, the barrel barn right now for the small cows, for the, for the veals. So if you look around in the barrel barn, you can still see the old uh, drinking... Um, trough. Uh, trough from the cows. I still kept them <laughs> in between cool. the barrels. It's a, it's a personal nutch I like. <laughs> but yeah, this is also the, the way that the cows used to come in. I, up until lovely. I was 10 years old, there used to be a big uh, field over there and the cows, they came. And we walked them up right. I still have pictures and uh, videos stuff of that. And that's the, the big ass meadow over there. That's ours. Oh, that's so yours. That's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's quite big. And then we have some. We have Scottish Highlander over there, a bull, and yeah. then some uh, some donkeys. Oh no. And then after this meadow, there's another meadow, and it's where the sheep are. Oh, you so have sheep. So if you want to go for a hike with a dog, you can just. It's like a five. It's like a ten minute walk uh -huh. around the meadow, and then you can see the sheep and all the. Cows. Oh, okay. She'll yeah. do that. She'll. And, actually, and then you got a nice be... little restaurant there. Yeah, the, the bar. Meadow. And this used to be actually a goose blendery as well. Oh. Wow, they used to be like everywhere, eh? Used and to be like this. And this street used to, before the, the, the railway was installed and before also the, the, the autoroute, mm -hmm. the highways were installed, this used to be go straight to Albersel. This used to ah. be straight to Beersel and straight to Halle. Ah! Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> you can only tell these stories if, you, if your family has been around for six generations. <laughs> but uh, back in the day. So it was a very busy road. And then my grandpa used to say, um, there were three. Uh, you know, there were three pierres on the brewery. There were, used to be three horses on the farm, two horses on the brewery. And in winter time, the horses from the farm they went to the brewery because in winter time, all the barrels have to be relocated. Talking about 1800s, and the f and in the summertime when there was a lot of stuff to go on the farm, then we then we got the far the the horses from the from the brewery. They came to the farm. It's like a logia for a, for a, they work for eating and uh, sleeping. And then we had five horses in the summertime to work on the fields. And that's uh, back in the day. And now you see the old timer which is the old timer which is on the on the parking. It's our first tractor and it's as old as my dad. So from 1962. Okay. It's easy, easy to remember. 
<laughs> One year older than me. One year older than you. <laughs> super old, so yeah, right? super old. <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, that's why I need him. He holds me up sometimes. And that's also when my, when my, when my grandpa comes in. So, so grandpa, this uh, is, 90, is 90, uh, 98 years old. And then he comes in, he cannot walk anymore. So we drive him in with the, with the car. And then he sees the fooders and he says, and he can, he can speak with really dialect, food. And he says, uh, Ooh, you, 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 who's going to drink all this beer? It's like, uh, like I say, yeah, there. We hope a lot of people. <laughs> people come back. The, people he, from all over the world come. come because he can beer. remember when it almost died, right? It is, mm. And then the, the son of the brewery, Jean Francois. Yeah. Um, he is actually from sixty. Also from the from the sixties. He came to um, back with Faro, like instead of limonade, just, right. just like very young lambic. Yeah. Super super to, sweet. I know a lot of people and, love Faro. And, said, and, and they also spoke a little bit of French because back in the day people with money spoke French. So it was not Elambos but Elambos. And they changed Faro for potato, for, ah. for uh, potatoes. And I was, and when I met Jean Francois last year, he says, when you go to your grandpa, tell him, um, cinq kilo de patates, s'il vous plaît, <laughs> because they used to do that for to, cha to change, to exchange stuff. Ah, they exchange lambic for potatoes. For potatoes. <laughs> oh, Faro. Farter. Faro, or like my grandpa used to say, Faro. Ah. Faro. Ah. But sometimes my, my my grandpa speaks such beautiful dialect. It's uh, it's it's going to be hard. When, when that goes by, but he's 90 year, 98 years old. He still talks, but he cannot, he cannot hear himself, so he just keeps talking. It's, <laughs> it's just like waiting and waiting, and that's, ah, that's something nice. He used to say, the, he was, the best lambic was brave as the perlaars in bloeistone. The best lambic was brewed when the pear trees were, blo were blossoming. That's so a lovely okay, phrase. But that's actually quite late in the season, because right now we say lambic is brewed in wintertime below 10 degrees. But perlaars, they're actually, it's quite late actually for blossoming. So what's up with that? And so, oh, throughout the years, definitions change and every generation that takes over the tradition from his parents changes something and, um, and everything adapts and grows. And it's a lasagna. Tradition is also a lasagna. You get something and you, and you, and you, you learn it from, your, from someone who has been doing it for such a long time. You can't read it in a book. Tradition means you get it handed. You don't read it. You, you feel it, you grow up with it, that's tradition. So my tradition is not from my family. I had to learn my tradition from somewhere else. And now after three years, I'm trying to find my own, my, my own character and trying to start my own tradition. But it's also, it's a, it's a, it's a history, it's a story that uh, it takes time to develop. Yeah, and people love that story. And so yeah. And thank you for telling it to us. Ah, well. Sharing no, it no with problem. us. I can, I, I can, I can go on. <laughs> I can go on. <laughs> well, you become the next Frank Bone, huh? <laughs> well, it's all this history that's uh, right in people's blood that's amazing, you know? That we have captured a little bit, you've shared a little bit of it with us here. That's wonderful. This is only for the small bottles. All right. We already erect. You see, I used to have them. The first, my, my first ten barrels were here, and now we have uh, all the small ones. So we actually quite cool. Yeah, it's quite cool in here. Yeah. It's also the south side of the farm, so generally this gets a little bit warmer in summertime. But as long as we keep everything closed, we can keep it cool inside. Lindemans, right? Yeah. Some Lindemans and small barrels. I don't use I don't use one straight barrel. I want to have as much different varieties of barrels to make complex lambics. The more complexities you have, the better your blends can be. Blending is choosing. Y yes or no, no buts. <laughs> and um, and working with small barrels for this brewery, working with big barrels for this brewery. This wort is a little bit more complex. We have a little bit more caramel in this brewery. We have a little bit more acidity, a little bit more lactic acidity going on in that brewery. So we're going to put that on bigger barrels, which less oxidation. Then we have breweries which have beautiful wort, maybe even too beautiful that we want to have some character. So we put it in small barrels. And so everything evolves, evolves and, and ages in different styles. There's not one Lambic. Lambic is the base and it proves itself, and it proves itself on a barrel. But it's... Uh, that's a lot, of, a lot like cheese making. You can make cheese from, uh, from sheep, you can make 
um, cheese from cows, you can make cheese from goat milk, and everything will have a different chapter. Cross-blending cheeses, that would be something. <laughs> Oh, you've done an amazing lot in three years. I've never done anything alone. I didn't learn this completely on my own. I had always people that backup calls, even like cattle that come sometimes. The first time I was bottling. <laughs> so just trying to figure out how to bottle manually, everything and stuff. Trying to figure out free fermentation and uh, just learning along the years because doing it for a big company is something else than doing it on your own with your own money because every euro is important because barrels are so damn expensive and it has to age for such a long time you can't go to the bank with um, a financial plan i'm gonna make this beer but there's also a big chance it will become vinegar <laughs> or this can happen or this can happen i need this much space this many barrels and then yeah but it, and yeah so sir you're gonna start making this beer but where did you learn it you can't, there's no book from Lambic, there's no guide of Lambic, there's no school of Lambic. The only way you can do it is just by working in Lambic and hopefully working in a different brewery which you can get the tradition from. There is no guide, you have to find your own way. So, yeah. Every generation always says, I had to learn from my dad and then I, had, I could only do my own stuff the moment he was gone because he was always checking up on you. But my dad is a farmer. He sees barrels and he's happy. So it's been very difficult for me the first two or three years, uh, two years actually. Like, am I doing enough? Is it, is it well enough? Is everything correct? Because I don't have that old guy watching over my shoulder. Of course, in your heart, there, there's someone. But uh, physically, there's no one who's angry if you do something wrong. It always has to come from inside. So it's always, with, the, with the years, you have to develop, you develop it yourself. And then some guys come work, come helping here, cleaning barrels, and then ah, this barrel is not well cleaned. Look at this, blah blah blah. And then you become the mentor, even though you're not, you're only 27 years old, and and then you have to, uh, yeah, becoming adult, of course. So yeah. And that's also the beautiful thing if you try the first bottles in the first year with the bottles right now. So much difference. I'm so glad the barrel, the, all the bottles are just getting better and better and better and better. Developing taste, my own taste, the taste, the characters that my barrels give, and uh, the objects I can blend. It's only a matter of time before I start brewing myself, but in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy Lambic from everyone. I have an ambition that in, right now we have eight Scottish Highlanders, I, and we had two calves this year. I hope to grow the numbers of the Scottish Highlanders, and then next year or in two years, when you come to the farm and we have an event, that, then we can have some Scottish Highlander burgers, or you can buy, Bottles and you can buy some meat next to it. That's uh, ready for the barbecue. So that's going to be awesome. That's, That'd be that's, great. Yeah, so ambitions, ambitions as well. But I hope beer is a way to expand the farm. My brother has been. My brother works with the hog pigs, which is a big, big ass brown pig with long hairs, and it's a pig you can keep outside throughout the year as well, just like Scottish Highlanders. And so we've been working with it for three, four years, but in a different farm. So who knows, in the future we can start combining it when Lambic makes the farm grow instead of the farm makes Lambic grow. <laughs>